Live from WTVO 17 and your home team, Eyewitness News at 5 starts now. COVID cases climb in the state line. The county coroner says he's running out of space. Rockford's mayor warns businesses that don't follow the rules are risking more than community health. One of the biggest Rockford area school districts announces it's going remote. Administrators have a list of reasons why, starting next week, kids won't be back in the classroom until next year. And Americans hear another plea to stay home for the holidays, this time from the nation's top doctor. Good evening, I'm Eric Wilson. Meanie Murphy is off tonight. Winnebago County State's Attorney Marilyn Height ross and local law enforcement leaders are holding a news briefing. We are told that this is about an ongoing investigation. Let's go live to the Winnebago County Courthouse and listen in. They observed a vehicle that had been struck numerous times by gunfire on the driver's side. The Rockford Fire Department arrived and removed the driver from the vehicle. The driver was later identified as 25-year-old Damavali Macklin, who had been driving the vehicle that was struck by multiple gunfire. Macklin was later pronounced deceased. An autopsy determined that Macklin died as a result of the gunshot wounds he sustained. A second victim was also seated in the rear of the vehicle, but he was not injured. During the investigation, Tyrus Jones was developed as a suspect. The case was reviewed by the Winnebago County State's Attorney's Office and charges were authorized. First degree murder is a class and felony that is punishable by 20 to 60 years in the Illinois Department of Corrections, followed by three years of mandatory supervised release. There is also, based upon the circumstances of this case, possibility of an extended 15 years regarding the first degree murder charges. Aggravated discharge of a firearm is a class one felony, punishable by four to 15 years in the Illinois Department of Corrections, followed by two years of mandatory supervised release. There is currently a warrant that has been issued for Tyrus Jones with a bond set at $5 million. If anyone has information regarding the whereabouts of Tyrus Jones, you are asked to contact the Rockford Police Department, Winnebago County Sheriff's Department, or Crime Stoppers. Tyrus Jones is scheduled to appear before the Honorable Judge Jennifer Clifford on Tuesday, November 24th, 2020 at 9.30 a.m. in courtroom B, as in Boy, in the Winnebago County Criminal Justice Center. That appearance is on unrelated charges. These charges are merely allegations and the defendant is presumed innocent until or unless proven guilty in a court of law. At this time, uh, again, I'd like to thank uh, the members in the community who have assisted law enforcement during this investigation uh, so that we could bring charges against this individual and help the family move towards closure. My condolences go out uh, to the Macklin family at this time. I would ask uh, Chief O'Shea if he would like to step forward to say a few words and then we will be happy to take questions. So um, I'd just like to say thanks to the people that helped us, the citizens that provided information for this particular case, as well as the detectives and the officers who worked the case. Uh, this is another one of the unfortunate high number of homicides and murders we've had this year from gunfire. Um, I would implore Mr. Jones to turn himself in to the county jail or to the Rockford Police Department, uh, as the state's attorney said, trying to give the Macklin family some closure going forward. Uh, this is another one of the uh, gunfire uh, deaths this year and we still have multiple outstanding cases so we really need the public to continue to provide us information and I ask that they do that on all the other cases as well. Thank you. Are there any other questions? All right, so we just learned that uh, Tyrus Jones, they've announced murder charges against Tyrus Jones um, in connection to uh, the, a shooting. 
Tyrus Jones is now wanted on a $5 million bond. Um, Tyrus Jones is also uh, the person who was involved in an officer-involved shooting uh, several weeks ago here in the city of Rockford. Um, we will have a little bit more information on this as it becomes available. We were watching that news conference and getting the information as you did, uh, but we'll update you. Um, certainly have more information online and, of course, coming up on Eyewitness News at 6. In the wake of the recent COVID surge, Rockford's mayor warns businesses not following new mitigations could face tougher consequences. In Region 1, 282 people are in hospitals with coronavirus. 62 are in intensive care units. 35 of those patients are on ventilators. The Winnebago County Coroner is reportedly running out of room as well. The office asked for more resources to help store bodies. Rockford Mayor Tom McNamara says every business needs to do their part. If they don't, they could pay the price. We are at dire straits here, so ours is going to be much more firm and strict. Uh, we will be issuing uh, tickets up to $750 a day, and if we have to, we'll start uh, uh, involving their liquor licenses. New restrictions go into effect at midnight. You can find the full list on mystateline.com. We need to go back to the Winnebago County Courthouse right now and that news conference with Winnebago County State's Attorney Marilyn Height Ross. We expect to get an update on a cold case that uh, has not been solved for more than 30 years. Let's listen in on that. Tammy's mother learned that Tammy had not returned home and she reported her as a missing person. At that time, a missing person investigation was initiated and several law enforcement agencies participated in that investigation, including members with the Winnebago County Sheriff's Police, the Rockford Police Department, and the Illinois State Police Crime Division. For almost a year, without any success, law enforcement searched for Tammy Tracy. Finally, on April 15, 1988, a photographer and a bird watcher who was in the Sugar River Forest Preserve found human remains. The remains were later identified through dental records as that of Tammy Tracy. An autopsy at that time was conducted on the remains and it was determined that Tammy Tracy has suffered a fatal gunshot wound, which caused her death, and she had also sustained a stab wound, which contributed to her death. During the time period of more than 30 years, law enforcement has worked on this murder investigation. This murder investigation was never cold, as some may have called it, but there were leads that needed to be followed up on by law enforcement, and they did that. They were relentless in following up on these leads. We most recently have been very focused on trying to get a resolution to this point where charges could be filed against Mr. Smith. And I'm happy to announce today that we've reached that point through the hard work and tenacity of the members of the Rockford Police Department, the Winnebago County Sheriff's Department, the Illinois State Police Crime Division, and all those other agencies that have assisted them throughout this 30 plus year murder investigation. I am also pleased to announce and thankful to those members in the community that have helped law enforcement over the years, and there have been several. Sometimes you don't see what's going on in the forefront, but rest assured, behind the scenes, your law enforcement, police departments, and the Winnebago County area, as well as the state police, are always working on these types of cases. The Tammy Tracy family has been very patient throughout the investigative process and I would personally like to commend them for their patience and for continuing to have faith in the law enforcement agencies that we would someday 
get to this resolution, and that day for the Tracy family is today. Mr. Smith was taken into custody late this afternoon in Albany, Georgia, on a $5 million warrant that had been issued for his arrest. These charges are merely allegations, and he is presumed innocent until or unless proven guilty in a court of law. The extradition process will go forward to bring Mr. Smith back to the state of Illinois to face these charges. At this time, I'm going to ask first Chief O'Shea to step forward and say a few words. He will be followed by Sheriff Gary Caruana and then followed by Chuck Davison with the Illinois State Police. Thank you. Um, as the state's attorney said, tenacity uh, kind of sums up the detectives uh, from all the agencies that have worked on this for the years. A uh, special shout out also to the FBI and the U.S. Marshal Service who has also uh, helped us over the years. Um, I came here about four and a half years ago and one of the very first people that I met was Linda Tracy. And uh, she went through her entire story of how her daughter had died so long ago and how she was not giving up hope and she was um, relentless in her pursuit of justice uh, with not only the detectives and the officers, uh, but she's been beyond patient waiting for this day. Um, her, her and her family um, obviously can start getting closure and get more closure as this goes through the, the court case or through the court system. Um, it's heartbreaking. Uh, it happened, it, this happened so long ago, I, I don't even know if any of us were even working here, or I wasn't working here. Uh, it's a long time for a case to get resolution. Um, but as the state's attorney has said before, murder has no statute of limitations and we're gonna keep working every one of them as long as we have to and hopefully get resolution. So with that, I'll let the sheriff speak. <clears throat> to mirror what uh, Chief O'Shea said in the uh, state's attorney, um, murder has no statute of limitations. Well, to recap what we were just been listening to, uh, investigators, uh, Winnebago County State's Attorney, uh, along with uh, Chief O'Shea and Sheriff Gary, Gary Caruana here in Winnebago County, announced charges in a murder case that's more than three decades old. In fact, um, 1987 was when Tammy Tracy disappeared. Uh, she was found dead in uh, 1988. Um, the case has gone unsolved. As Marilyn High Ross, our state attorney, said, cases don't go cold, but you could probably define this as a cold case. Uh, but this afternoon, a suspect has been arrested. His name is Jesse Smith. He was arrested in Albany, Georgia. Uh, he is now charged with two counts of first degree murder. He's a $5 million bond down there. State Attorney Height Ross mentioned that the extradition process has started for Smith to come to Winnebago County and face what he's accused of. Um, as Chief O'Shea said the Tammy's family never gave up on this. It's been a long three decades for them. Uh, they never gave up uh, hoping to find who was responsible. And now there's a suspect in this case. In fact, uh, we did a story not too long ago with the Tracy family about billboards that they put up to make sure that uh, no one forgot about the case. Clearly, investigators had not. So the recap is uh, an arrest has been made in uh, Tammy Tracy's 1987 disappearance um, and murder um, here in the Rockford area. Jesse Smith arrested in Albany, Georgia this afternoon, two counts of first degree murder. We'll have a full update for you on this story online and later on Eyewitness News at 6 and then again at 9 and 10. Region 1's positivity rate is the second highest in Illinois. Rolling average is 19.5%. This is the third straight decrease. Boone County still has the highest rate in our area at 31%. Winnebago County is at 18.9. It's down nearly two percentage points since Sunday. In response to the increase in COVID cases, a local school district will make the change to full remote learning. Harlem will switch over from November 30th until December 18th. Administrators say the decision was made after hearing concerns from parents, the community, and staff members. Technology, materials, and meals will be provided. Information about those will be sent home with students. The district hopes to return to blended and in-person classes by January 4th. Coronavirus cases reach record highs across the nation. With the upcoming holidays, public health officials advise the public to stay vigilant. 
Our Washington correspondent Raquel Martin spoke with the U.S. Surgeon General. He warns hospitals could reach breaking points if people don't listen. Eyewitness News is keeping you connected to the nation's capital. The safest way to spend Thanksgiving this year is with the immediate members of your household. U.S. Surgeon General Dr. Jerome Adams is begging the public to change its behavior for the holidays. We need to recognize the urgency, the severity of the moment. In the last 30 days, Adams says the daily number of coronavirus infections reported has tripled. He warns if Americans don't take action, it will be near impossible for the White House task force and the nation's health care system to keep up. At some point, the demand outstrips the supply if you don't control these record cases, which turn into record hospitalizations, which consume PPE and beds. Adam says the White House Coronavirus Task Force is working around the clock, but already many hospitals are overwhelmed. The positive rates are just exploding all over Kansas City, all over Missouri. We, we've got to have some very strong Policy. Democratic Congressman Emanuel Cleaver and Iowa Congresswoman Cindy Axney say the president should be doing more to help. We need him to step up and put a mask mandate in order. And even Republicans like Illinois Congressman Adam Kinzinger want the president to get back in the game. I do think the president needs to be more vocal. Do you think it would be more effective if the president shifted gears back to the crisis at hand? That's not for me to say. We know that there are people who listen to the president. There are people who listen to, uh, to Joe Biden and there are people who listen to uh, folks in their local community. Adam says the safest way to gather for the holidays is virtually or with small groups six feet apart wearing a mask outdoors. In Washington, Raquel Martin. You've heard it before, stay apart in order to stay safe during the holidays. One local fire department had to pivot to make sure they could still feed seniors in the community. Ari Bruckman shows us how. Usually one week before Thanksgiving, people would be sitting inside the Harlem Roscoe Fire Protection District with friends enjoying a free dinner. Instead, because of COVID, the fire department delivered those meals to seniors through a drive through today. Oh, that's very nice. We've always come to their dinners because it's a great chance to see neighbors and friends, and we try to financially support the fire department. I go to these uh, dinners that uh, the firemen have normally, but this is a freebie today, so I'm sure glad to be able to do this. The chief didn't want to have to cancel because of the pandemic, so along with the Roscoe Lions Club, volunteers were able to make it happen. Thank the community for the support they have shown to our fire department, especially over, not through the lifespan of it, but especially over the last nine months. Seeing the local fire department support for the community, especially at a time like this, is exactly what holiday season is about. Reporting in Roscoe, for your home team, I'm Ari Bruckman. We had a bit of a warm up as we head into the weekend, but rain may make an appearance. Chief Meteorologist Candace King joins us now from the First Warren Weather Center. Candace. Yeah, you know, it was nice today. Temperatures made it into the 60s this afternoon, but the downfall was that wind at times coming in at about 35, even close to 40 miles per hour. Winds have really subsided here now that the sun has set and our temperatures are actually still fairly comfortable. 59 in Freeport, 58 in Monroe. We're still at 64 in Rockford, one of the warmer spots. 57 down in the hub city of Rochelle and 63 in our temperature in Sterling. You can see how that southerly wind really pulled in a lot of that warm air down to the southwest, but there is a cold front lining up back across Iowa and into central and northern Wisconsin. That front will come through later tonight, but it's going to come through mostly dry. A live look with our Mercy Isle Sky Track camera out in Rochelle, looking off to the northwest. Beautiful sunset as we had some of that sun filtered out from those high level cirrus clouds. And we'll still keep with some of that cloud cover here as we go through the night tonight. Here's that cold front. Notice though, it is pretty dry because we don't have a lot of moisture in the atmosphere. So as that front continues to come through, it's going to come through dry. High pressure is going to build in behind that during the evening tomorrow and really sink in across southern Wisconsin and northern Illinois as we head through the day on Saturday. This means that rain chance for at least the start of the weekend is going to stay more to our south. Lining up from Nebraska, Missouri, and then into southern Illinois along that frontal boundary. But as we go into Saturday night and then into Sunday, we get another area of low pressure that'll develop along that front and kind of lift it a little bit further to the north. So this will bring back a slight chance for a few showers as we head into Saturday night and then during the day on Sunday before another area of high pressure builds in and we start to see our skies clear out. 40 Six, that's where we end up tonight. Actually, temperatures will stay a little bit more mild. Front comes through and clears us. 
by about 6, 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. We still hold on to a westerly wind kind of up above, so we're really not going to see our temperatures drop off too much, and there's really not a lot of cold air behind that. 59 for tomorrow afternoon. Partly sunny skies. We will see a little bit of cloud cover associated with that. Less windy, so that's the big thing after the wind has been with us here these last couple of days. This is what the next seven days look like with your most trusted forecast. 46 on Saturday. Slight chance for some of those showers as we had Saturday then into Sunday. We'll keep those temperatures as we had into Sunday and Monday. 45 degrees for Monday afternoon. Slight chance for a rain-snow mix late Monday into Tuesday. Tuesday, I think next week is a day to watch just with some rain. So any travel plans you might have heading into Tuesday and depending on how long that low lingers into Wednesday, we could see some of those rain showers stay with us. But our temperatures actually will be staying above average early next week, those average highs in the lower 40. So we're still above that. We could sneak out a 50 degree day for Thanksgiving. Right now, Thanksgiving itself looks to be dry. Temperatures may hang on air just a little bit above that average as we head in towards the end of next week. The overall pattern, though, getting into December does favor a higher probability for those above average temperatures. It doesn't necessarily mean we'll see the 60s again, but still temperatures in the upper 40s at this time of year staying above average. No kidding. Upper 40s even into December sound great too. Thank you, Candace. Scott Lever joins us now with sports. Scott, the IHSA is following the governor's lead when it comes to COVID mitigations. Yeah, that's right. The IHSA is relenting and complying with Governor Pritzker's recent mitigations with regard to COVID. The IHSA says it is, it is pausing all IHSA winter sports and activities. Starting tomorrow, high school teams will no longer be able to practice. Conditioning and weight training before and after school will no longer be allowed. Open gyms also won't be allowed. All practices and competitions can only be conducted virtually. Only outdoor workouts will be permitted and they'll have to be in groups of 10 or less while wearing masks and distancing. The IHSA says it hopes this will be a short-term pause. The IHSA has two more meetings planned for December 2nd and December 14th, when it will again review the status of winter sports. We've seen a number of Bulls lottery picks in recent years, and many of them have been a disappointment. The Bulls think the guy they took last night, Patrick Williams, a 6'8 forward from Florida State, will be different. They think he could be the complete package. 132-point game against Charlotte. Van Fleet knocks it down for three. All right. Well, the next big event on the NBA's agenda is free agency. We just blew by that video starting tomorrow. Fred Van Vliet's one of the best free agents available. The Knicks are one of the teams likely to target Van Vliet. They freed up an extra $40 million in cap space by parting ways with six players. If Van Vliet doesn't wind up with the Knicks, the Pistons are a possibility, and he could always wind up resigning with the Raptors. The Raptors drafted a point guard last night just in case, but... They'd like to have Van Vliet come back. Wrigley Field is a national treasure, and now it's officially a historic landmark. It's been granted that status by the U.S. Secretary of Interior, David Bernhardt. Wrigley was built in 1914. It's the second oldest stadium in Major League Baseball behind Boston's Fenway Park. Hey, there's a great one on tap in the NFL tonight. Kyler Murray and the Cardinals against Russell Wilson and the Seahawks. You can see it on Fox 39. The kickoff is at 7.15. That's sports. Eric, back to you. Scott, we've got a little bit of time to kill here. I have to ask you about Fred, though. How is exciting is this for you? Because you've you watched him since his high school days, really. And we're talking about now he's a free agent with the potential to get some pretty big bucks over the next few days. Yeah, obviously it's, it's exciting to see because Fred has worked so hard, even from a very young age as a youngster here in Rockford. So you like to see a young man like that get rewarded, and he's going to get rewarded for sure. He's probably the biggest name free agent out there right now. So he's going to get his payday. The big question is, is it the Knicks? Will they be the team that makes him that big $20 million, maybe more per year offer? If not, you know, the Toronto Raptors certainly want him back. And his former coach in Toronto is uh, Dwayne Casey is currently coaching the Pistons, so you know there's a strong tie there. So it's going to be one of those three teams, I'm pretty sure, Knicks, Pistons, or back with the Raptors. Safe bet that no matter where he lands, that team is going to suddenly find a whole bunch of fans in the Rockford area that the team never had before. Scott, thanks. And that's all for us. We'll see you again right back here at 6. Stay safe.